असलम मेरे वन वेलकम बैक टू दिस चैनल दिस इज़ मी आलिया वहीद एंड यू आर ऑन द चैनल ऑफ मेडिकेयर सो वेलकम बैक टू दिस चैनल सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द रिमेनिंग पार्ट ऑफ एनजाइना पैक्टोरिस एंड वी विल स्टार्ट द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ इट बट बिफोर गोइंग टू इट्स ट्रीटमेंट वी विल डिस्कस सम बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट अबाउट इट so before i am going to start this lecture i hope that all of you are doing fine and all of you are uh, doing your pharmacology very very best so if you not you if you are not enjoying the pharmacology then please subscribe to my channel to get more videos about that and to enjoy this subject so first of all we will discuss what is angina pectoris we have discussed in the previous lecture that angina the word angina is come from uh, the greek word which mean angira angira means to uh, to block and the word pectoris is derived from a word which called pectus and this means the chest so we have discussed that in angina uh, your chest pain is occur and why the chest pain is occurring to you because of imbalance actually there is an imbalance between the two situations first is the oxygen supply okay so there is imbalance between the oxygen supply and the oxygen demand so this is the oxygen supply this is oxygen demand so oxygen supply is less oxygen demand is more so these things are happening in the angina so the heart muscle is going to be they cannot get properly oxygen and uh, the angina or the chest pain will occur where it occurs we have discussed the symptom that asthma will happens there will be very poor blood flow due to which oxygen cannot be supplied and <clears throat> so that's why you will feel the pain mainly on the left side and why majorly on the left side we have discussed it and uh, we also have discussed the three types of angina pectoris which are stable angina unstable angina and perizymental angina we have discussed all of them and their difference also and we have also seen the difference between the myocardial infarction and the unstable angina pectoris so in this lecture we will discuss that uh, what is the frank stalling law so frank stalling law it states that increase in the filling of ventricle result in more contraction or more out uh, cardiac output सो दिस इज़ अ लॉ कि जितना ज़्यादा ब्लड आएगा आपके वेंट्रिकल्स के अंदर उतना ज़्यादा आपकी फिलिंग होगी उतना ज़्यादा ब्लड आपके वेंट्रिकल्स में बढ़ेगा उतनी ज़्यादा ही वो ज़ोर से कॉन्ट्रैक्ट करेगा और कार्डिक आउटपुट बढ़ेगा बट अ पेशेंट हु ऑलरेडी हैज़ हार्ट अटैक और पासिंग थ्रू अ केस ऑफ एंजाइन है पैक्टोरिस सो नाउ दिस लॉ ब्रेक्स फॉर डैट पर्सन सो इन दिस पर्सन द कार्डिक मसल आर बिकम लेस सफिशेंट सो दे कैन नॉट प्रॉपरली फिल देंट्रिकल्स और प्रॉपरली कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दैट सो दिस विल बिकम द एनसफिशेंट मसल्स एंड डैट्स वाई द फ्रेंक स्टॉलिंग ला इज नॉट ओबेइंग और इज नॉट अक्रिंग इन अ पर्सन हु हैज़ हार्ट अटैक so this question can be uh, asked to you in a viva so uh, make that concept in your mind then the next important concept is about the heart dysfunction 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 mean heart is not working properly heart is not performing its function properly and what is the function of heart Sim very simple its function is to pump the blood into your whole body so now in the heart dysfunction your heart is not properly pumping the blood into your body so there are two types of uh, heart dysfunction first is systolic dysfunction and second is diastolic dysfunction so what are them let discuss them so first is systolic dysfunction it's mean the heart muscles are weak your muscles of the heart they are very weak and due to their weakness they cannot contract the properly especially the muscles of ventricles you know uh, in the ventricles the left ventricle is the most important because when the left ventricle contracts it push the blood uh, rapidly out through your aorta and uh, pass that blood into your whole body but if the muscles or ventricles are weak 
they cannot contract properly and now they cannot send blood uh, properly into your whole body as a result preload decreases out and what is a preload very simple preload is the pressure uh, by which the ventricle push the blood out of it so the pushing of that blood uh, which comes out is called as a preload now as the ventricles are not contracting properly there will be decrease in the preload there will be decrease in the ejection fraction the fraction of blood which is ejected out this is called as ejection fraction so the normal value of ejection fraction is about 50 to 75 percent but the person who has systolic dysfunction who has heart attack who has angina pectoris his ejection fraction is very less which is less than 40 percent so it's mean a person who has ejection fraction less than the 40 percent it means that person has a heart attack his heart is not working properly and he has systolic dysfunction so systolic dysfunction is his heart is not his heart muscles are not working properly so this systolic dysfunction is also called as heart failure with reduced ejection fraction in simple word you can say h f with a w r e f now the second type of heart dysfunction is the diastolic dysfunction so in this your heart is squeezed normally okay your muscles can contract or relax properly in that there is no contraction because muscles are so weak that they cannot contract or relax properly but in diastolic your muscles can contract or can relax but now here the muscles are stiff and very thick in size now the thickness of the muscles is so very much so let this is the uh, last part of your heart so i am uh, drawing the abnormal muscles who are a lot of thickness in them so as here i have draw here so it has a lot of thickness normally the thickness is not like that i am drawing now the normal thickness which is such thing like that this is the normal but in the uh, dis uh, diastolic dysfunction this thickness is become so very big now it, it this muscles become stiff and uh, it doesn't allow ventricles to relax properly now only a small amount of uh, blood can occur and it is not going to relax itself so less blood will fill out in the ventricle while the ejection fraction is normal in them so it's mean it doesn't matter your ejection fraction is normal or abnormal the patient can have heart attack but its stock volume or cardiac output will be decreased out ठीक है क्योंकि क्योंकि कम blood flow filled हो रहे हैं इन दोनों ventricles के अंदर जिसकी वजह से cardiac output और stock volume कम होगा so now we will going to discuss about the drugs which are used for the treatment of angina so here I have written all the drugs which are used for the treatment of angina so uh, we have classified them so we will discuss the classes of it so in that lecture we will only discuss the first two classes uh, but this classification is done on the base of their mechanism of action that how they perform their action and second thing is that on their target that on what specific site on what specific cell they are acting so the first class of the drug is the vasodilator as the name indicate vaso mean vessels and dilators means to expand to dilate something so <clears throat> they are acting more on your blood vessels than your heart so two types of blood vessel we have arteries and veins so they are acting on both arteries and veins but we have seen the heart attack happens due to coronary artery coronary artery is an artery which supply blood to your heart but veins has a role in it so we have to also expand the veins uh, so that it uh, it could uh, normally return the venous return uh, into your heart properly so that's why the vasodilation of veins is very important so actually what is uh, what are the classification of vasodilators is classified in two groups organic nitrate and hydralazine 
what are organic uh, nitrate they are again divided on the base of their duration some are long acting some are short acting very simple the short acting is nitroglycine we have discussed them that they cannot be given through the oral route when we have discussed the routes of administration we have discussed nitroglycine is given through the sublingual route so it cannot be given through oral route why because when it goes to your oral route it has to pass through the liver and your liver cause the first bad metabolic uh, metabolism effect due to which uh, the 90% of your nitroglycerin will going to metabolize only 10% will left which can uh, perform the action so therefore we cannot give nitroglycerin to that patient especially who have the angina so you can suppose that you will orally give the nitroglycerin to a patient who already have a heart attack and then you will wait that 10% of nitroglycerin will control the heart attack of that person so that not possible so therefore we will give the samlunda route because we we have an emergency case we have the patient who has a heart attack so we want uh, more or uh, rapidly uh, this drug goes and treat the patient so therefore we will give the nitroglycerin uh, it has very short duration but rapid onset rapid onset it is quickly acting on your heart and uh, going and uh, performing a section but not to a long duration only uh, within our few hours it is performing its section then after that you have to again take another medicine so this is only for the emergency case so a patient came who so has angina so the first line of therapy which you give to him is to give a sublingual drug which is of nitroglycerin okay then his, this patient came is under the control then after that you will go for the long therapy what is the long therapy it's mean long acting drugs which are two drugs isosorbide dinitrate and isosorbide mononitrate these two drugs are used they have very very long action actually dinitrate has a more long action than the mononitrate so mostly dinitrate is uh, more used so but they have slow onset they cannot use for a, uh, a rapid action or rapid onset so they cannot be given in the emergency case they are given when you have to treat the patient uh, when it has no emergency when it it goes to home and daily have to take a medicine so when you then you can give the long acting drug but it is not the first line of therapy only the first line of therapy will be nitroglycerin so how they are working how they are uh, treating the patient who have a heart attack and how what are they doing so that's very important i have written here actually in your arteries or in your veins especially we have two major veins in our body uh, superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava so due to very uh, highly demands of the oxygen or very less supply of the oxygen both of these veins are in the contracted form so therefore workload on the heart is increased so now we have to decrease it we have to decrease the demand of oxygen we have to increase the supply of oxygen so what we will do actually the smooth muscle of these veins so this is a smooth muscle cell we will give drug whether it is nitroglycerin or the long acting drug they will release no what is no this is the nitric oxide so this no will enter into the uh, muscle cell and act on an enzyme which is called as a gc gc enzyme is uh, naturally present in the smooth muscle so it converts gtp into cyclic gmp it's just like the atp is converting into cyclic uh, amp so just the same thing uh, now uh, just uh, the a is replaced replaced by the g so now after the formation of cyclic gmp various kind of steps occur and there is decrease in the calcium level and always you remember that whenever the calcium levels increases in the body the contraction happens and we have to stop this contraction because more the smooth muscles contract more the arterioles or veins contract and we have also see the patient who has angina uh, his veins and arteries are already contracted so now we have to relax them 
so therefore we have to decrease the calcium so now the calcium decreases out and also the cyclic gmp is causing the mono uh, myosin d phosphorylation so actually there is a enzyme present which is called as myosin light chain phosphatase which causes the myosin d phosphorylation so now the myosin and acting filament cannot overlap with themselves so always remember that when a smooth muscles contract there is the overlapping of myosin and acting filaments but now due to the enzyme these cannot be overlap okay so now they cannot be overlap and the muscle should not cannot be contract so this way the uh, smooth muscles undergo a process of relaxation but these organic nitrates have a lot of adverse effect like it can cause headache to you uh, in case of myocardial infarction in the left ventricles they can cause decrease in the uh, cardiac output decrease in the blood pressure and already in the myocardial infarction into the right side of your ventricle already the blood pressure decrease by giving drug to that patient more blood pressure will decrease out which leads to the patient uh, to towards the case of severe hypotension second adverse effect is that it can cause vasodilation and vasodilation particularly in legs which can cause orthostatic hypotension orthostatic hypotension that is very very important for the viva point of view this can also be called as a positional hypotension in this way when a patient uh, let's let's suppose the patient is sitting and uh, suddenly he stands up and he will feel a case of hypotension or dizziness he will feel a, 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 a chakkar and then uh, he uh, he complains so what happens in his body because it dizziness occur because his blood pressure decreases too much and his heart rate is increased so this is due to the change in the position after sitting to suddenly he stand up and then he will face this situation so a lot of drugs like organic nitrates they can cause uh, orthostatic uh, hypotension to a patient then the next is drug tolerance long acting drugs uh, if they uh, taken up through a long duration they can cause drug tolerance like the gis gc uh, enzyme will tolerated out it desensitize therefore it not responds to that uh, and not cause the relaxation of muscles so therefore for treating it we will give not an o exposure mean we will not expose nitric oxide to it as uh, for about 10 to 12 hour and after 12 hour you can give the nitric oxide or these drugs now the second class of vasodilators is the hydrolysine in this uh, just the same mechanism in, inside the cell just there is the epithelium of this cell is going to release nitric oxide so always remember in our all the smooth muscle naturally the epithelium is responsible for the release of nitric oxide but due to some reasons like in the angina the person who has the angina in that person uh, the epithelium is not going to release the nitric oxide so therefore we will naturally induce uh, such molecules which release the nitric oxide so naturally compounds which release nitric oxide is the organic nitrate but this drug is not releasing nitric oxide by itself it induces the epithelium to release nitric oxide not doing the work with uh, with uh, by itself allowing others to do that work so this is the mechanism of hydrolysis so after uh, this is was the first class of which is treating the angina now move on to the second class so this is the second class which is used for the treatment of angina and this is the beta blockers so you know very well just revise quickly revising out the adrenergic receptors Uh, so we have uh, uh, alpha receptors and beta receptors alpha receptor alpha 1 receptor alpha 2 receptor alpha receptors are present in the vessels or uh, is present in the urinary bladder is present in the smooth muscles is present in the eye uh, iris or pupil and quickly revising the alpha 2 receptor it present in the presynaptic neurons and uh, where are the beta receptor three receptor beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 beta 3 are on the fat cells 
beta 2 is on the lungs and the beta 1 where it is yes you are right beta 1 are present on the heart so what is them so as we know that angina is related to heart so all the receptors which are present on the heart we have to need them we have to study them so uh, the beta blockers they are acting on heart not on the arteries because on the arteries the alpha 1 receptor are present if the beta 1 receptor are present on the artery then we will consider them but because beta receptors are present on the heart so they will act on your heart mostly but sometimes they can also attach with the alpha 1 receptor i will discuss it so first you know about the selective or non-selective drugs selective beta 1 drugs are to metaprolol etanol non-selective attach on beta 1 and beta 2 which is propanol and some drugs are which attach which attach on beta 1 also on the alpha 1 and this is called as siva diol and that's very important for us siva diol bind to the beta 1 receptor as well as on the alpha receptors so alpha receptors are on the blood vessels they are causing the dilation of the, these blood vessels so that is helping out so now let's discuss the mechanism of it so this is your heart this is the central nervous system so as you know already we have decrease in the cardiac output because your heart is not working properly in the case of angina now your heart will send must uh, send signals to your central nervous system uh, sorry sympathetic nervous system your sympathetic nervous system will activate it out it will again send signals to the adrenergic receptors present on the heart means beta 1 receptors okay so now uh, on the beta 1 receptor here it will release norepinephrine norepinephrine will bind with these receptor now where these receptors are present actually these receptors are present on the nodal cell nodal cell mean sa node av nodes on these nodes and also it presents on the muscles like contractile cells or the smooth muscles increase the contraction so after this binding or release of epinephrine, now your nodal cells increase the rhythm. What is the function of nodal cells? They increase the uh, impulse conduction. So therefore, rhythm will increase out, contraction will increase. As a result, all of these uh, factors increase the heart rate, increase the stroke volume, increase the cardiac output. So just quickly revise what are these uh, components. So what is the heart rate? very simple we have studied that the number of heart beats uh, in a minute in a second per second so about 72 beats uh, is showing in one second what is the stroke volume but that's very important is the volume of one heartbeat in one minute so eight minute me eight heartbeat ठीक है मैंने कहा एक सेकंड में 72 हार्ट्स बीट होती हैं तो एक मिनट में कितनी हार्ट बीट्स होंगी और उसका कितना वॉल्यूम होगा तो अबाउट 70 नॉर्मली uh, इसकी रेशो 50 टू 100 एमएल है यू कैन से इट एज द 70 एमएल एंड व्हाट इज कार्डियक आउटपुट इट इज द वॉल्यूम ऑफ ब्लड ड्यूरिंग वन कार्डियक साइकिल ड्यूरिंग होल कंप्लीट कार्डियक साइकिल नॉट द वन हार्ट बीट so uh, you know the cardiac output is the multiplication of uh, shock volume and the heart rate so they multiply them so as a result if they both heart rate or stroke volume increase your cardiac output will also increase out and which is our main purpose we have to increase it so now let's discuss the adverse effect so because they are uh, increasing the heart rate or cardiac output uh, and due to a uh, they also act on the eight alpha 1 receptor causing the vasodilation of your artery ovals as a result the bp can decrease out it can cause severe hypertension to any patient and also called bradycardia which can cause decrease in the heart rate also because now we have blocked them so drug will going to block it block the rhythm block the contraction block the heart decrease the heart rate decrease uh, so uh, this will be decrease out this will be decrease out but this will remain same so therefore uh, you can feel bradycardia 
सो वट आर द टॉक्सिसिटी इफ़ यू टेक्स दैट बीटा ब्लॉकर्स इन वेरी हाई टॉक्सिसिटी सो इफ़ यू टेक द बीटा वन सेलेक्टिव ड्रग्स सो दे कैन ऑल्सो बाइंड टू बीटा टू वेदर दे आर सेलेक्टिव बट यू कैन नॉट से द सेलेक्टिव ड्रग कैन नॉट बाइंड टू अदर रिसेप्टर दैट्स नॉट पॉसिबल नॉट अ ड्रग इज हंड्रेड परसेंट प्योरली अटैच ऑन द बीटा वन एवरी ड्रग इज नॉट acting on a single receptor it can act on the others so like beta 1 selective drugs whether they are selective but they can go for the attachment to the beta 2 so therefore we have to uh, if we give them in toxicity they can bind to beta 2 as a result on the beta 2 where the beta 2 receptor they are on the lungs causing vasoconstriction of bronchioles so now let's see what is the contraindication so you have not have to give these drugs to copd or asthmatic patient because these drugs can bind to beta 2 cause vasoconstriction and if the vasoconstriction occur in a patient who already have asthma it can lead to death of that patient then you have not have give this drug to diabetic patient because in diabetic patient you already have seen that the glucose levels are very high and these drugs uh, effect on the liver uh, because they are causing increase in the um, glucogenesis and glucolysis activity so as a result it can increase decrease the already present glucose so in the di- uh, increase the glucose secretions so in the diabetic uh, patient already the glucose concentration is so high so therefore the hypoglycemia uh, unawareness can happen so sorry the glucose levels will so much decrease that due to the hypoglycemia the patient will die and uh, you should not give these drugs who already have heart failure because it will lead to so much hypertension that the cardiac shock can happens to that patient so what is the indication what kind of person can take these drugs so person who has hypertension been very high blood pressure they can take it and the person who has post myocardial infarction they can also take beta blockers so we have studied the first two classes of drugs which are used for the treatment of angina i hope that you will understand that lecture if you find this video helpful then please subscribe to my channel like my videos and also press the bell icon to get the notification of all the videos which i have uploaded thank you so much guys meet you soon in the next lecture take care allah hafiz